Twilight and her friends sat in the radio room. Twilight adjusted the dials on the radio trying to find the alien signal. It had been about three days since she had last heard from Captain Graceland, and they all knew, wanted to know what was happening to them. Twilight, I don't think they are going to be on, Applejack said, walking up beside the alicorn. They're probably busy dealing with the sick. I know, but I just want to know they're okay, Twilight said. She knew her desire to hear from the alien was moving past just curiosity about them, but she couldn't get what Graceland was having to deal with out of her head. The idea of a stallion having to deal with so many sick ponies while having no help from the outside world due to some sort of disaster and the captain talking to the radio in the vain hopes of some pony hearing. She felt if she didn't listen, then she was abandoning the alien and somehow making everything the captain was doing mean nothing. Twilight, darling, I want you to know what is happening with these ponies as well, but I think we are getting too close to this, Herity said, placing a hoof on her friend's shoulder. No, I'm fine, Twilight said, as she adjusted the dials once more, her wings shifting in frustration. She didn't see her friend all share a look of concern. This is Captain Grayson of the U.S. National Guards, broadcasting on all frequencies. Yes! Twilight cheered. A large smile on her muzzle as the captain's voice, and she stopped smiling, slowly dropping as she realized the captain sounded exhausted and was taking a while to speak more. After a few minutes, there was a sigh. My men did a sweep on the bunkers with the gaugers, with their geiger counters, and confirmed significant damage to part of the bunker, allowing radiation to leak inside. Twilight blinked and searched her mind for definitions of radiation, but came back blank as Graceland sighed once more. I had a section of the bunker sealed, but it may be too late. Leak was significantly and more and more people are getting sick, and the sick are getting sicker. I fear we may all be suffering from severe radiation poisoning. The six mares recoiled, and their ears plastered against their heads. Not how. They may not know what radiation was, but poisoning they did know. I ordered my men to give their iodine pills to the kids and hope it will be enough to counteract the effects, at least for them. I may not... I'm go not gonna lie, though. I don't think our chances are very good, and a lot of people are scared. Oh, who am I kidding? We are all scared shitless. The way I see it, the earthquake mixed with whatever damage was caused by the bombs landed nearby led to the breach and we didn't catch it in time. The mares jumped as they heard the sounds of something being thrown against the walls. I should have fucking had my men sweep the bunker with their gauges counters just before after the quake. That way we could have found it earlier and sealed the section off preventing all of this, but no. No! I had my men do a visual inspection only. I didn't even think of a leak till people started getting sick. And now because of me, we may all die in this godforsaken hole in the ground. Twilight looked at the radio in horror. Whatever was wrong, whatever this radiation was doing, it was bad enough that the captain fought they were all going to die. I know I could have an excuse of me having to keep track of so many people sayings, or it's due to how little I've been able to sleep or any number of excuses available, but to me, but that won't change. The fact of what is happening now, come on, we know you have meds for this. You are the fucking military. You need... 
to return to your room, main room. We are doing everything we can to help you. What the hell? Twilight blinked as she could hear the distant raised voices. Bullshit. You are just keeping everything to for yourself to make to save your own asses. Sir, step down back now. You are all ordered to return to the main room now. Fuck you. We aren't leaving you till you help us, sir. Don't. Twilight and her friend, the others jumped as there was a crash and then the radio speakers was filled with the sound of loud banging and clattering and the sounds of screams of fear and pain. God damn it! Twilight heard the sound of hoofing, hoof falls, gallops from the radio. Cease fire. Cease fire. I am fucking ordering you to see. Twilight blinked as the radio suddenly cut out in a wave of static. No, what? No. What? No! Twilight cried out and teleported over to the radio and started to turn the dials, desperately trying to get the signal back. Come on. Where is it? She said. She didn't notice the fact that her friends had all paled. After a few minutes, Twilight felt the hoof on her shoulder. Twi, I think that's enough for today. Applejack said, No, I can't. I can get the signal back. Twilight said as she was tr kept turning the knobs. She had to know what happened. Twilight, Dallin, Applejack is right. I think we have listened enough. Rarity said, and gently used magic to pull Twilight around to face the others. Twilight blinked as she saw her friend's face. And then, took a deep breath, looking back. I guess you're right. Applejack placed a hoof on the alicorn's shoulder again. Cheer up, Twa. Everything will be alright. I'm sure of it. I guess you are right, AJ. Twilight said. Her friend shared a look. And then Twilight walked out of the room. They all followed. Chapter 6 Signing Off It had been a week since the last transmission from Captain Graceland. Over a week since whatever happened in the bunker, and in that time, Twilight had been at the radio trying to find the signal. She had given up sleep and barely ate. She had to know they were okay. Deep down, she knew something bad had happened, as these ponies didn't scream like that for no reason. And she only imagined what the bangs and clattering had been that seemed to be causing it. Come on! Come on! Where are you, Gra Captain Graceland? Don't tell me you gave up transitions! Twilight said as she turned the dials. She cursed the fact she hadn't built the radio with a mic and broadcast so she could have spoken to Captain and let him know some pony was listening and could hear him and did care. Come on, you have to work. You haven't failed to pick up the signal yet, Twilight said. She had worked. As she worked, she had to find the signal. Twilight! She heard Spike say from the door. I'm a bit busy, Spike, she said, trying not taking her eyes from the dials as she turned them. We know, Sugar Cube. That's why we're here, Applejack said as she walked in, following, followed by the rest of Twilight's friends. And frankly, we are concerned about you. Spike tells us you haven't left this room since we left last week. Has it been that long? I haven't noticed. Twilight said as she adjusted the dial. The five friends looked at each other. As Twilight didn't seem to really be paying any attention to them. They then looked back out the door and stepped to the side as two others entered the room. Twilight, your friends 
are very concerned about you. A voice caused the twilight to freeze and slowly turn away from the radio to see both Princess Celestia and Luna standing by the door, her friends to one side of the room. P Princess, Twilight said and quickly spun around and bowed out of reflex. Rise, Twilight. You do not need to bow, Celestia said with a small smile. The young alicorn quickly rose with a small blush on her face. What? Why are you here, Princess? Twilight asked, running a hoof through her mane to try and fix it as best as she could. We sent for her, darling. Rarity spoke up. You haven't left this room in over a week, and Spike told us you haven't slept in and have barely ate, eaten anything. I'm, I'm fine, Twilight said, trying not to show how exhausted she was. Twa, you and the rest of us know you aren't. You've never stayed up this long before, Applejack said. Yet, yeah, yes, Twilight Sparkle, I notice your dreams have been absent for some time, so we know you haven't been not been sleeping at all, Luna said. Twilight, I understand. Discovering proof of life on another planet is important, but you shouldn't sacrifice your health for it, Celestia said. You have already made great stride from what your friends tell me, and I'm sure you can rest and come back to it. Twilight looked at her hooves. This isn't about proof of aliens. She said quietly, and the gathering ponies shared looks. Then pray tell us, Twilight, what is it you're sacrificing yourself for? Luna asked for the group. Twilight looked back at the, up at each other and gave a tear at the edge of her eyes. I, I need to know what happened to them, she said. The others looked back. Captain Graceland and the rest have been, of them are trapped in some kind of desperate situation, and Graceland had been sending out signals hoping to find help or just someone else. I don't know. I might not be able to reply to him or send help, but I can at least listen to him so he isn't quite so alone. And if he... Even if he doesn't know some pony can hear him, she said, and looked back to the radio. Some pony has to listen, she said, making her way back, and continued to adjust the dials again. The ponies and even Cele the princess shared looks before they all entered the room fully. Celestia, walking up to Twilight, I understand you feel this way, Twilight, but... It is really so important to lose sleep over? Yes! Twilight didn't hesitate as she adjusted the dials. Something happened, princess. Something bad. Real bad. I need to know what happened, and I can't miss Graceland's transmissions. The solar princess nodded and could tell this meant a lot more to the younger alicorn. And she had to admit to herself that seeing her students so concerned for these aliens' well-being did make her proud. The speaker suddenly let forth a slightly wet sounding cough, causing everyone in the room to face the radio. <coughs> this is Captain Graceland, U.S. National Guard. Like, it really fucking matters anymore. <laughs> Twilight's ears went against her head tightly as she heard that captain breathing heavy and how bad it sounded. It sounded like he, he had fluids in his lungs. As of three hours ago, I am the last living person in this bunker. Twilight looked at the radio in horror. No. Things got so much worse. You can't put so many people in a small place while they are getting sick and not expect them to panic. 
Somehow, we were all scared, and the civilians and my men. The civilians went... Thought we had some sort of medicine to fix all of this. Thought we were keeping it to ourselves, and some of them attacked my men. All hell broke loose. As the civilians panicked and my men panicked, by the time I was able to regain control, half the civilians were dead, and the others either injured or scared shitless. I couldn't punish my men for defending themselves. I couldn't blame the civilians. We all have to... We all have so deep in the shit that it, it was bound to happen. I had the bodies moved to another part of the bunker so the civilians could calm down a bit. Not that it really... They really trusted us anymore. But they were so scared to do anything. I did what I could to try and smooth things over. And so did Miss Anderson, who seemed to be the only person not to panic. Twilight recoiled as the speaker set forth with more coughs. Damn, that hurt like hell. The civilians kept getting sicker, and even some of my men started to as well. The iodine pills did nothing for the kids. Their bodies weren't strong enough to fight the radiation. It, if it was short after the first death when people started to feel the effects when well I guess you could call it an incident happened Corporal Smithers I guess he couldn't take the pain anymore he drew his sidearm and before anyone could stop him he blew his brains out all over the back wall of the main room right in front of everyone we quickly calmed the civilians and Removed the body, but but I was saw the way a lot of them looked after that. I could tell what they were thinking. I made a decision. We had a lot of morphine, so so I gave them the options. I don't know if that makes sense. That makes me a monster or a saint. Whatever I am, I have to live for whatever remains of my life. It started off slowly. Just a couple of the sickest, then a few more, then more, taking the offer. But the time it was over, it was just me, Sergeant Foreman, Private Lockler, and Miss Andrews left, and, and I had to watch them die. Miss Andrews was the last to go. And do you know what she told me before she went? She told me none of this was my fault. <laughs> Twilight and the others flinched as Graceland laughed bitterly. <laughs> Not my fault. That's rich. I had one job. One simple job. Keep my men and the civilians alive. And look at it now. This bunker that was supposed to keep us alive became our tomb. <laughs> Twilight flinched as Graceland had another coughing fit that lasted longer than the rat last. Oh, this is, that's not good. Looks like my lungs are filling with blood. They heard the captain laugh bitterly again. Guess it's what I deserve for failing my duty. Live long enough to watch everyone I was supposed to protect die, and then take the longest to die myself. It's what I deserve. I failed. There's no excuse. As there are dozens of other things I could have done that would have prevented this outcome. And you know... You want to know the best part about all of this? Do you? All this happened over a dispute over land. That's right. A small strip of land led them to destroy... A world with the push of a button. Isn't that amazing? Something so stupid led the world to burning. The radio led forth another more coughing, and Twilight could tell the captain was having more trouble breathing. I don't know why I'm bothering to talk into this damn thing. 
I doubt anyone is listening. I don't even know if there is anyone left alive. Hell, for all I know, we could were the only ones to survive. Now we are all dead. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking in case someone is listening. That way they know what happened in this godforsaken hole. And, no, we tried. Lord knows we tried. I don't know. Maybe some el someone else... Maybe someone out there is doing better than us. Hell, maybe after I die, a rescue team will arrive and open the door ready to save all of our sorry asses, only to find a tomb. Or maybe civilians will come back in centuries from down some archaeologist will find this bunker and open it to find our skeletons and we'll debate what happened to us and we will end up as some footnote in history who the fuck knows <coughs> the speakers let out a froth Graceland's bitter laugh once more that developed in the coughing I don't know think I have much longer to live. Yes, this is it, huh? My final words. I wonder, what should it be? May God have mercy on our souls? No, too cliche, and I doubt he would anyway. Long live America? I think it's too late to say that. How about this? I am a failure. I failed my men, and I failed the civilians who are depending on me to save them. Their blood is on my hands, and no one else ever... Every death in this hole is on me. Not my men, not the bastards who fired the nukes. Me, and only me. Yeah, that will work. This is Captain Jared Graceland, United States Army, signing off for the last time. And I am a failure. With that, the radio dot went dead. No one in the room spoke. What could they say? They just heard the last words of a dying person who thought he was a failure, that no one heard them. Carefully, Twilight reached out and turned off their radio. You weren't a failure, Captain. You did the best, and no pony can fault you for that, she said, and quietly as she turned off the radio, walked to the door, and slowly, the others left, one by one, no one spoke, they were all in their own heads trying to proceed, what they ju had just heard, they just, they had just heard the final words of a dying planet, that had bathed in fire, by the hands of those who lived upon it. Something no pony could ever imagine happening in their worst nightmares. In nuclear war, all men are cremated equally. Dexter Gordon